I'm Steve Dawson. And I'm Jeff Smith. We're here from DFG to share valuable insights and techniques to protect your organization against fraud. We're starting this series with something we feel is urgent. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars gone in seconds. But there are clear ways to protect against it. Today, we want to discuss vendor information change. While not the most exciting topic, we find that there are deep vulnerabilities in this area. If your business ever pays money to any vendors ever, you need to be doing these things. Fraud involving vendor information change happens so swiftly, has incredibly high dollar consequences, and because it often utilizes an unsuspecting employee from your organization, is often not covered under insurance. Here's what we're seeing. You may have heard the term business email compromise or man in the middle attack. Man in the middle attacks interrupt two parties who believe they are communicating with each other. For today's purposes, an organization and their vendors. Often you picture phishing schemes or high tech hacking strategies involving software, really complicated, sophisticated cyber crimes. And while that can be true, we have repeatedly seen simple man in the middle attacks as fraudsters use basic social engineering to psychologically manipulate employees. Through phone calls or emails that convey urgency, fear, or similar emotions, innocent employees can be led into revealing sensitive information or convinced to make changes that allow the fraudster to get large amounts of money fast. Here is a case we witnessed recently. The victim organization received an email from someone they believed to be an established vendor. The attacker used an email address very close to the valid vendor's address. The attacker requested a change in payment and provided a new bank account and routing number. The employee made the change. The organization made a vendor payment to the new account. Shortly thereafter, the actual vendor called to ask why they had never been paid. The victim organization realized they had been tricked. In one routine transaction, they sent a vendor payment of a half a million dollars to a criminal. Half a million dollars gone in one moment because of one email exchange. So what can we do to stop this? First, let's look at the new vendor establishment process. When establishing new vendors, be sure your procedures are thorough, documented, and taught to employees. DFG provides a complete new vendor establishment form that includes vetting and validation that extends far beyond simply accepting a W-9. Starting your vendor relationship strongly prepares your organization and employees to expect and uphold this level of validation throughout the course of your business together. Second, let's address vendor information change. At DFG, we expect vendor changes to be documented in writing through a specific form. If you take anything away from this video, let it be this. Use a vendor information change code. This code must be provided by the vendor in order to make changes. To do this, provide a new vendor information packet for vendors to keep on file. Include a change code discreetly somewhere in these papers. And if they reach out to make changes to their account information, call their attention to this code and ask them to read it to you to confirm their identity. They may have to search and shuffle papers a bit, but they should be able to tell you this code. This is how you know you're speaking directly to your real vendor. If you're speaking with a fraudster, not only will they have zero knowledge of the code, but if you mention the word code, they realize your organization is not an easy target. It doubles as an alarm system sign in your window. You're communicating, we check our information. We are diligent. If your vendor can't find their code, have other detailed procedures in place for them to verify their identity. Offer to mail them another one to the address you already have on file. It may feel excessive, but remember, hundreds of thousands of dollars in one transaction if you're speaking with the wrong person. Finally, education. The Better Business Bureau in 2019 did a study that showed before training, 30% of employees were likely to click on malicious links or disclose sensitive information to outside parties. After training on social engineering and man-in-the-middle attacks, only 2% of employees were likely to respond to these types of suspicious communication. Teach your employees about this common type of fraud. Give them a healthy skepticism when dealing with sensitive information. You can teach quick, 
Simple tricks like hovering over the contact information of an email to verify the actual address. Make sure vendor emails match to the letter and punctuation of the address you have on file. Teach your organization the common vocabulary of fraudsters. Request follow-up, urgent, important, or simply being asked, are you at your desk? As a method to move an employee from email to a phone call where they can move more quickly through the fraud. In that same 2019 study, it was found that if an employee responded to the initial email sent by the fraudster, they were 10 times more likely to send money out of the organization. Give your employees the resources to recognize this type of attack. When compared to the amount of loss you can suffer, these controls are simple, effective ways you can protect your organization. On the education front, you can begin by very easily showing this video to your organization. Immediately raise awareness, that healthy skepticism among your team. For further guidance on new vendor establishment, vendor information change procedures, and other topics, visit our website and contact us with questions. If you enjoyed this content or think your organization would benefit from continued strategies and policies focused on preventing and deterring internal fraud, please click like and subscribe. If there's a topic you would like us to address, please leave a comment below or contact us through our website.